Peace to Black Power family. Welcome to another episode of Do Knowledge Radio. The place where knowledge is born. This is your host, Knowledge Born a Lot. And I want y'all to take in this royalty, this elegance, this African excellence we got on the panel today. Okay, I am double blessed to have some warriors who don't take no mess or no vaccines in the building today. You understand? <laughs> I so that, they ain't taking no mess and they ain't taking no vaccines. Okay. <laughs> No vaccine. All right. No vaccine. So forget what you thought. You understand? We got warriors <laughs> who have sojourned in the trenches for the hearts and minds of African people and our African future, our political prisoners, our African political prisoners. I got to stress that because we start getting mixed up and fixed up and start acting like everybody is with us. It ain't nobody with us. So let's, let's welcome this royalty, these African warriors to the, to the panel. Queen Mother Yaya Sansuai Zinga in the building. And Queen Mother Natasha Robert in the building. Welcome to the platform. Welcome to the show. Love to have y'all here. I'm excited. What's going on? How y'all feel? We feel good. You feel know, good, yeah. Feel Glad good. to be here. Mm -hmm. We're doing the work, and when you're doing the work, you have to feel good. You know, mm -hmm. it, it can't be painful. You have to love what you're doing. Absolutely. With ease. Okay, 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 okay. We here because we a few days away from some greatness, right? That's what's going on. Absolutely. Let's, let's talk about give us the backstory, give us, you know, some behind the scenes, some some love. You no, know, let's 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 celebrate our celebration. Okay. Let me let me just start off by um for those of you who do don't know me, um, my name is Yasanta Wanzinga. I'm an educator. I'm an activist, I'm an actress, um, and I've spent my adult life, even some of my childhood, fighting you know, for the liberation of our people and to gain freedom, freedom for the liberation of our people. I work with the Northeast Political Prisoners Coalition, um, the Spirit of Mandela Coalition, and the um, Before Sekou came out, the Free Sekou Odinga. Um, I was on that committee. So my life at this time is pretty much dedicated to fighting for the freedom of our political prisoners and encouraging other people, not just to fight for them, but oftentimes we don't even know who they are or how to get in touch. So we really want to um, today is to, you know, inform you about a benefit that we're having and also to get you to understand a little bit more about political prisoners. Um, and my name is, like the brother mentioned before, Natasha Robert. Um, I, like Sister Nzinga, also work with the Northeast Political Prisoners Coalition. I've been doing work around political prisoners and just in terms of our community and different aspects for at least in terms of like my adult life as I know it now. Um, about 10 years and before that still just always working for, for people, um, you know, for black people, but in, you know, different areas. So, um, like Sis and Zinga said, you know, we just really want people to know about everything that's going on and really use, um, our voices to elevate the voices of those that people do not know whose voices that they try to, to, to silence when we talk about our freedom fighters, our, um, the political prisoners and, you know, those who they try to make you forget about or not know about. So, well, so how did this work begin for you both? You know, um, what was it about the political prisoner movement that got your attention? And what are some of the things that many of us need to know about our political prisoners? You know, my involvement, my real involvement in, in understanding who they are. But many of us grew up, especially if you're in my age bracket, and we knew the Black Panthers, we knew um, the Black Liberation Army, but I, I think what we didn't know is how many of them were, were still and are still behind the walls. And we, we would see photos when I was young, you know, with the Black Panthers with their fists in the air and their, their hats on their heads, um, their berets, um, and, and glorifying them for the work that they did, but forgetting and not asking 
where are these brothers and, and, and sisters now? So when I was a teacher, one of the things where well, I'm still a teacher, still an educator, but before I was fired from the board of ed, one of the things that I did like at um, Sankofa International Academy, which was an independent school, is I made sure that each one of those students took on a political prisoner and they had to come in and they had to report about the political prisoners. They had to show photos of them. And these were kids that were, we started at five years old. And the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, all the way to 12, 13 years old, as long as they were at Sankofa Academy, they had to bring in charts and bulletin boards and understand uh, who our political prisoners were. So I started to work early. Getting on the committees, um, when I when Sekou Odinga was still in prison, a, a brother, um, Mogadishu, saw me and I was um, in the street and he ran me down and said, sister, because Mogadishu does tons of work for our political prisoners. He was like, sister, sister, you know, we need you on this committee. And my mind was, I don't want to be on another committee unless it's really functioning. So I started going to the meetings basically with that Queen's house, who is now married to Sekou Odinga. And I was married to him when we first started the committee, but we know she, she's married to him now. And we started going to meetings there. And it seemed like if you came into the meetings, you would think we were coming in just to have a good time because we didn't have meetings without food, something coming in. But that's the thing that people all understand. Revolutionaries also have fun too, and often we're doing the work. So I went into the Sekou Odinka, um, Odinka um, Defense Committee, and, and we worked on the we had a photograph of myself and Mogadishu. We had worked so hard that we one had passed out on one side of her couch, another one passed out on another side of the couch, and she took a photo of us because we were so tired that we could not go home. So I, I got really, really seriously involved at that time. And then after Sekou Odinga got out, um, the committee was formed, the Northeast Political um, Prisoner Coalition was formed, and we were working uh, to assist and free and liberate and do whatever we could, not just for political prisoners, but you know, also um, for, their, for their families. And then I joined the Spirit of Mandela Committee, and if any of them are listening, they probably have said, where has she been? But I'm still with that committee. So I, I try to get involved with as much as I can but also make sure that I understand that I have to limit what I'm doing so that I can make sure that I don't burn out um, either. I remembered the first time I went to visit Sekou Odinga in prison. That was one of the things he said. He said, you know, you got to take a break. If you take it for a day or you take it for a week, he wasn't suggesting that we break for a long time, but that you have to take a break from the work and regroup because you'll get sick. He, he spoke of an attorney that worked for them and that the attorney, you know, got so involved that she became ill. So that's where my work started, basically, was knowing that I was an educator. And as an educator, it was not just my job to let them know that the Black Panthers and the Black Liberation Army existed, but to let them know who they were, what they did, make them study it, and also... Um, make sure that they understood that these brothers and sisters didn't disappear off the face of the earth, that they're locked up behind the wall fighting for our liberation. That's, that's my intro to how I really got involved. Natasha? Natasha? Oh, um, I thought he was going to ask me a separate question, but, um, yeah, so, I mean, for me, um, I actually got involved with political prison work through Sister Nzinga, Um, because I had met her, um, you know, a long time ago now <laughs> at a book club um, that we were part of. Or say, uh, you're not coming, you're coming in under static. I don't know, um, Brother Knowledge, are you, are you getting static on your end? Yes. With Natasha, something's coming in, Natasha, that's, that's gravelly. 
Yeah, I'm here. I mean, I heard it when it, when you were talking, but I thought maybe like um, I'm not I'm not hearing it on my end when I'm oh, talking, okay. but maybe okay. Um, I'm sorry, yeah. um, brother. Knowledge going out. You hearing it? Are you hearing static when you? Yes, when I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the same static. Yeah, as soon as you start talking, that's what it is. Uh, if you could leave and come back, maybe that'll fix it. Okay. Okay. So while she's trying to get that together, uh, Queen Mother, can you, can you talk to us about this implementation strategy and kind of like the onus for us as parents to, you know, push this part of history that's very underserved, you know, like what are some of the techniques you kind of use to present? Yeah. And yeah, and I think this is probably um, one of the best times we have to ed educate our youth. Sometimes when I see parents on Facebook, woe is me, I have to educate my youth. First of all, you can educate them anytime during the day when they're not being taken in by the um, Board of Miseducation and all of that. But what we need to do is understand we must start in the womb. We must start reading because when a baby is in the womb, it's understanding. So we must start doing that. Just like any other group of people, we have to start having schooling and educating our children about not just political prisoners, but our history as a people, who we are, where we came from. Now, one of the things, and, and before the, the um, corona started taking over the world, one of the things that I always said was have pajama parties. Have, have parties that are knowledge parties. Kids come and bring the kids over. Feed them, you know, something good to eat. Sit around. Have a conversation. Play games that when you answer the question correctly, you get this or that. Or, or something, or um, when, you, um, when you come to the dinner table, like my nephews, uh, when they used to come to the dinner table, they would have to answer black history, African history questions, and I would then give them a quarter. We have to take on the responsibility of whether we're educators, so-called educators, um, we have degrees or not, we have to understand that we have to take on the responsibility of educating our youth. And we're also, and trust me, I, I'm not against uh, formal education, but you do not have to have a degree from university, university. To, to teach any child. If I had a school, I'm not going to ask you, do you have a degree? First question is, do you believe that you're an African and that our children are Africans? Next question is, do you understand the subject matter? Because we have people out there that understand the subject matter and they do not have degrees from, and, and we are so happy when we hear our, our child has a degree from Yale or from Princeton or one of those schools. Those are, those are white folks' institutions. And as Dr. Clark said, and then I'm going to shut it down so Natasha can come back in. As Dr. Clark says, oppressors are not going to teach people they oppress how to take their power away. So there's no one at these white institutions and at many black ones that are going to teach your child how to take their child's power away. It doesn't even make sense. So we need to start bragging about that, finding out who's best qualified to give our children the education they need, regardless of, of where their degree is. Because we all know Dr. Clark started out there late. Are you back in? Oh, there you are, Natasha. Yes, I'm back. Um, is this better? I hope it is. It I hope it stays this way. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yes, going on. Can you assist? I'm not. Okay, I'm back in. I don't know. Can you hear me, brother? Hello? Yes, I hear you. Am I being heard? Hello? 
Yes, we hear you. <laughs> and can I, am I being heard? We're not. Obviously not. Wow. What's going on? Natasha, can you hear me? Knowledge, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Can you hear me? Can I just hear myself? Do I have to leave and come back on? How is this? Is this better? It's perfect. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yes. You have the floor. Okay. <laughs> so, um, as I was saying before, um, I got into political prisoner work through Sister Nzinga. Um, we met at a book club um, where that she was teaching um, with another brother who I knew. Um, and then, and while she was doing her political prisoner work, uh, when it came time, uh, you know, I think it was a little bit of a little bit before um, Sekou Odinga was released. Um, they were gearing up to start um, working on helping to get another political prisoner out, um, Abdul Majid, and they were looking people for people to be on their on his committee. So um, she had asked me if I was interested in doing that. Um, sadly, Abdul Majid passed away before um, we could really, you know start the work to really get him um, out. He um, passed away behind the walls. But um, then I got into another committee um, for Maliki Shakur Latin um, to help get him out of prison. And we ended up getting him out of prison as, prison as well. Um, and then from there on, I joined the Northeast Political Prisoners Coalition and, and I've been doing work with them. Um, and, you know, just like helping specific political prisoners, you know, through the organization and helping to make sure like the, whatever they need, we can get, get it to them. Um, and making sure that, you know, we're visiting them, we're raising money for them. We're raising awareness for them. Um, we're letting other people know. And I've always been, like I said before, like even since, you know, before I was an adult, like throughout high school and all these other times and in college, um, just doing work on campus and at school around, um, black organizations, um, when we, when I, even when I used to be like the president of the BSU, when I went to um, college and things like that. So always just doing the work around, um, black people and for black people and just educating black people and getting us to know more of the stuff that we don't learn in school. Cause just like Sis Nzinga, I'm also an educator. That's my background. Um, and that's what I realized even more when I started actually teaching in schools after getting out of um, college is that there's so much that we don't know, even though like I went through the school system and realized like, okay, I was learning some stuff and there was things that were missing. But when I started to do it myself on the other side of, um, being in the classroom, I really saw it. So, you know, that, that was also part of, you know, what I did and what I continue to do now, um, as an educator. Well, so I was asking, uh, sister Nzinga, before the technical difficulties, what kind of implementation strategies do you use to, you know, kind of raise awareness about political prisoners, black plight, black history without you? So, um, in terms of like just to help raise awareness for black um, for political prisoners, I do, you know, like because I guess I'm in that um, uh, what they call millennial generation, but I don't call myself that. I'm just, you know, an African person, you know, doing the work. <laughs> Born when I was born, I'm the age that I am. But um, so, you know, with that quote, quote unquote generation, there's a lot of social media. So, you know, I use my social social media to basically talk about and show the work that I do with political prisoners, raise awareness for them. Um, and then I also do stuff with, you know, like she said, um, she mentioned herself, like talking to friends, getting my family involved. Um, and, you know, I think especially like when you start to do the work sometimes, like you, you just, you're trying to tell everybody who you can think of. And right. sometimes you forget like, Oh, these are, there's people right around you in your immediate circle who don't know these things just because you've started to learn. It doesn't mean that they know it. So um, I've really like gotten my family involved and, you know, they jump right on board, you know, donating, going um, to events, uh, 
learning information. Um, and then also I've done like writing letter events. So where, you know, I'll host an event and people can come and uh, learn about the political prisoners, the different people, and um, maybe create a birthday card for them or write them a letter and, and, you know, and start talking to them in that way and start supporting them in that way. Um, and going to different campuses or working with um, student organization groups, you know, going there and, and teaching them about um, political prisoners and the fact that America does have political prisoners as much as they would like to deny that they do. Um, in the same way that they call other countries out for having political prisoners. So those are just right. some of the things that, you know, I do in my way to, and obviously, and also for me, you know, teaching kids too about political prisoners. So um, just bringing it into spaces every, you know, that I am and, you know, looking for people who are going to be receptive and be able to to say, oh, okay, yeah, I understand that makes sense. Like, you know, I want to support. So what do we need to know about our, you know, our brothers and our sisters? further behind enemy lines, you know, what, you know, what are their hopes and what, you know, what would, what can we do more than what we're doing, you know, to be involved in the process at whatever level it is? Um, I think that we need to know that, like, we need a lot more of our people, young black people to be involved. Um, you know, I work with a lot of pro political prisoners and, and, um, you know, we, there's different political prisoners in different states. So that's also one of the things, right? That um, per state, like for example, Sundiata Coley, he's in New Jersey. And there's like a whole different set of, you know, um, circumstances and rules and regulations that exist in New Jersey around being in prison there um, than there does that for someone who's in prison here in New York. And then we have um, Kamal Siddiqui, who's imprisoned in Georgia, um, as well as um, Imam Jamil Alamin. So they're in, in different states, there's different rules and regulations. Um, and also like even to the level of um, when it comes to federal versus state. So there, that's also another thing. So that there's all of these different ways and circumstances um, that surround our political prisoners when they are in prison, so um, that they come at them in different ways. So when we think about supporting political prisoners, we, we need to think about supporting them on, you know, like a, a state level where, you know, if they may be in prison, you know, in a spe specific prison in, in a state, but also um, who, you know, who to, who to call and put pressure on when we're um, trying to get support for them on the federal level, knowing the difference that, you know, and what, knowing what state they're in, you know, if you live in New Jersey, if you're a young black person living in New Jersey, what can you do for Sundiata Akoli? How can you support him? If you're a person living in Georgia, what can you do to help support um, Imam Jamil al or Kamal Siddiqui? Or if you're in California, what can you do to help support um, Matu Matulu Shakur and build there? Because when you're putting pressure on it, sometimes, a lot of the times, you know, the people, the constituents in that actual state right, have a lot more um, sway, even though, you know, inter, I mean, nationally, you still want to put that pressure there too, but then locally, you know, what is going on there? So we want them, we want uh, black people to know that, like, we need, we need more of us to come on and do the work. Um, we're doing it and there's a lot of us doing it, but we need more. We need more people to be involved. We need, we need more people to make sure that, you know, we're spreading the word. The more of us that spread the word, the more of us that, you know, make calls and um, write letters, the easier it is. The more of us who put on events to, to help educate other people, um, the more of us who decide, okay, well, we're going to organize um, our own committee here in this area of the country. And then we're going to coordinate with other committees that are doing the work in other countries um, in other cities and countries, um, because we also want to take it international. So, because we want, we need them home. The other thing that they need to know is um, they are they have a lot of ailments. Our political prisoners have a lot of ailments behind the wall. Um, really, they wanna they want them to die behind the wall. They you know there's people who have uh, mass murderers who have you know <laughs> committed <laughs> mass murder and have gotten out of prison um, you know for in in less time than you know political prisoners who we know were uh, victims of COINTELPRO. 
and who we know we're fighting the oppression and we're fighting liberation. It's just like saying, hey, it's okay for like, you know, Nelson Mandela to stay in prison, but we need to like let Jeffrey Dahmer out or something like that. Um, so it's, they need to know that they have a lot of ailments that really um, we need to make them visible. We need to make sure to do all that we can to make political prisons visible so that people know and so that these prisons and these states and the federal government know that you can't, you're not going to just do anything to them and you can't just keep them, keep them in there and make them die in prison be, and, and that people don't know about them. And speaking of, can, am I being heard? Yes. I am coming in as an echo now. <laughs> uh, you can hear me. Yeah. Okay. And, and we'll talk about the federal government. One of the things that we have to understand is that the president has the power to free any prisoner that's in the federal prison. So Matulu Shakur, um, Baranza, Peltier, he can free, a president can free them. Now, many of us get up when we hear about um, Donald Trump freeing his, his, his croonies. It, that's, what Don, that's what Donald Trump is supposed to do. That's what a white supremacist does, free other supremacists. He had power. Now, we, we certainly commissioned Barack Obama to do this, or Barack Obama did not want to. All sorts of letters went to Barack Obama to free Matulu Shakur, and he had the power to do that. Understanding that, we must also understand that when we, when we bring Kamala in um, and Biden in, Biden has that same power. You know, we keep wanting these, these white boys to come up in, into a government and somehow we think that they're our saviors and they're not. And you know, if any white boy is bringing Kamala in, we know there's a problem. But we also have to understand that this, this, this president has the power to, to literally pardon and free Matulu Shakur, Baranza, Peltier. Um, he has that power just like Barack Obama had it. So we have to put pressure on them too. I don't know if it'll do any good because they really don't care what you think. You know, I think we think they value our opinion more than they really do, but they don't. But we still have to put pressure because these are the people that hold the key. Um, you take somebody like Cuomo, who everybody loves now because of how he's handling COVID, but he's an enemy of black people. Ask Charles Barron about Cuomo. He's not our friend. You know, he's blocking um, one of our political prisoners now um, from, from uh, being able to be pardoned for voting. So we have to understand that these people are not our, our friends and that we have to find ways to get around them or go through them, one or the other. But it's uh, it, adding on, piggybacking on to what Natasha was saying. You know, I have what's called uh, my Underground Railroad. My sister, some of my friends, they're not going to be the people on the show like this. They're not going to be the people with their black fist in the air. They're not going to be the people running in and out of prison. Busy. But they will finance the movement. So if you have those people in your life, if you have those people who who don't want to say, I'm not going into the prison. Okay, then give money. We'll take $100 a month, $200 a month from you. You don't have to go into the prison. We'll take it and do what we need to do. So I think oftentimes, you know, we forget about those people who have money to support us, who I call the Underground Railroad, who don't want to be known, but hey, they have the money. They'll give you the money, take the money, keep your mouth shut and do what you want to do with the money but they will give it to you. And I get money from a number, financially, from a number of people who would never show their face, but they're the Underground Railroad. They will finance a good portion of your cost because some of them feel guilty, um, but they will give money. So we have to look at all aspects of it because sometimes people say, what can I, what, what should I do? And my response is, what can you do? What are you good at? You know, do you write? Do you, are you a fundraiser? Uh, are you are you real sharp on social media? Never turn down any who is not an enemy. Now, if they're an enemy, we don't need them up up in our camp. But people who are not our enemy, 
find out what their skill is. They may just be an artist, but they can put a flyer together for you. Do not underestimate our people. We are African people. Our creativity, what we do, find out what do you do best. And then have them do, a, do that for our political prisoners. Just make sure that they think like you and look like you. Because people who don't look like you are really not going to be as supportive as you may think. They show up on the scene. But when it's over, they go back to wherever their little suburban house are or over in Fort Greene or whatever they want to do. But um, yeah, please do not turn people away because they haven't read this book. They haven't done this. Find out what their skills are and, and grab it and use it. Excellent. Excellent. The, the, the propagandists and the revolutionary make the same impact on the battlefield. I think the propagandists even longer because they're around longer. You know, their, their writings are, are, are around longer. The the revolutionary might fade from the scene. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But those words won't. Those words won't. Yeah, no you're deeds, coming in you kind know, of. So. Tasha, are you hearing um, clear on your end? Yeah, um, I'm hearing him. See, it's coming in really gravelly on my end. So, um, you may have to respond to what he said because I, I honestly did not. Get oh, he to was hear it. he was just talking about um, the revolutionary and the propagandists. He's saying that they, you know, oh, they both make okay. their contributions. Like they, they both have, you know, the same amount of like um, power, I guess, in terms of influence. Because I mean, in terms of a uh, contribution to to the struggle and to liberation. Okay. Okay, so I know that I was gone for a minute because I had to, I couldn't be heard. I had to get off and then come back on again. Natasha, did you start to speak at all um, about the Jazz for Justice? No, not yet. I was just talking, have you we, were just asking what, what, should, what, do the, what should the people know? Like, what do they need to know about political prisoners? And so that's why I was talking about some of the stuff that they need, that people need to know. Right. Okay, and I, and again, I'm, I'm getting like, little choppy pieces of um not i'm not really am i coming through clear yeah i'm hearing you yeah. clearly are you hearing her clearly um brother yes then i'm going to blame it on, on on you and brother knowledge if i'm coming <laughs> through <laughs> blame it, i swear the two of you are not I'll coming through. It. it could be a conspiracy going it. on here. <laughs> so, but uh, I, I do want us to spend time um, talking about the Jazz for Justice. And I think I heard Natasha mention um, some of the, the needs that, that our political prisoners have when they're behind the wall and when they get out. Um, you know, we have political prisoners that don't have families that can come and visit them. So it's up to us to do that. Um, they don't already always get commissary. One of the things is that usually every year there's a, a banquet for the political prisoners' families. Well, there isn't one this year. And oftentimes we raise enough money at those banquets to be able to maybe give them two, $300, which lasts them for a long time. Well, they're not getting that money anymore because we don't have the banquets anymore. So we have to really make sure that, you know, that we're donating, that we're still kind of trying to keep some sort of financial aid going for those political prisoners that are incarcerated. Now, when they come out, some political prisoners come out in better shape than others. If you happen to come out and let's say you happen to have gotten married or you already have a place to stay, then, you know, it's different than someone who comes out and we're trying to find where are they going to live? How are they going to eat? Are they in some nasty, funky halfway house? This is what happens to them um, when they come out. And even those that come out um, that have like, let's say like Sekou Odinga had a, a, had a wife that cared a lot of, or still has one that cares a lot about him, but he still has to be able to 
you know, raise money. And oftentimes I remembered when he got out, you know, people want you to come and lecture for nothing. They forget that you didn't make, you didn't have a living where you made money in prison. Sekou didn't come out rich. So, you know, when someone says, can Sekou come to such and such a lecture, you want to, we want to pay our political prisoners. And we don't want to offer them two or three hundred dollars for a lecture that we offer somebody else two or three thousand dollars to do. So we, we do have to remember when they come out, it is our job to try to find them work, to understand that, you know, when they come out, if they have families, they still don't want to have to be like supported by their family. They are, they're men, they're women, and especially our men. They want to come out and work and donate and give to the household. And we have to remember that. So when they come out, if they write a book, we must buy those books. Um, if you need someone to lecture, we must tell the unit, especially universities, that we must pay these political prisoners. We can't ask them to go lecture at XYZ University and, and think that they just, that it's a popularity contest and they just need to come in um, because they want to be popular. No. Um, so, yeah, when we look at our political prisoners, we really do have to look at their needs. Remember, they don't come out with a wardrobe. <laughs> they don't come out with a wardrobe. They don't come out with a, a, a watch, a, a coat, um, you know, uh, uh, pants, uh, shirts. And, you know, they don't come out with a wardrobe. You've never seen any of them rolling out of prison with suitcases. You know, and oftentimes what they have in prison, they give away. They have shoes. Other prisoners are like, man, can I have those shoes? They give some of the things that they have to prisoners who they have to leave behind. So then that there's we're so much supporting those that are in. We have to support those that are, are out. And that's what this um, uh, this uh, jazz for justice is about, is making us aware of who who these political prisoners are. Um, uh, what what are we doing for these political for our political prisoners? If there may be one political prisoner that we really need to give, you know, financial assistance to just who we need to identify these brothers and sisters. And I like to say sisters, too, because, you know, when you look at move nine, you know, there was a lot of women involved in, in that, you know. So I think that Natasha has a little more information as to who will be blowing their horns, playing their pianos, singing, rapping their rap on that jazz for justice. And that she can give us a little more information on that. Yes, um, so I do. So um, just in general, just to let everybody know, um, we're having jazz for justice, um, which is a fundraiser to raise money, as the Sensinger was saying, for you know those of our freedom fighters who are behind the walls and those who have been released. Um, it's going to be on December 27th in the spirit of Kuji Chakalia, self-determination. So if we say that, you know, we want to be a self-determinate people, we, then we have to support those who have fought for us to be self-determinate, those who have fought for us to be released from um, this, this, this strang stranglehold of oppression that we're under. So we are having at least about 12 different artists um, perform. Uh, we have jazz artists. We have um, somebody who's, you know, doing a little bit of rap. It's a, most of it is jazz. You know, we, we call it jazz for justice. Um, but we, but then we also have um, people who are doing, you know, like really great singing. And so it's a little bit of a mix thrown in there, but mostly it's jazz. So even if you're not someone who knows tons about jazz, you can definitely come in here, come into the event and find some stuff out. Our we're suggesting a $20 donation because this is a fundraiser and we do want people to come and donate because we would love to raise a lot of money. Because as of now, we still have at least about I want to say 10 uh, political prisoners still behind the wall. Um, we have a few who have been released. Um, and we want to get all of them home and we want to support all of the ones who are, who have been out. Um, as the sending a listed, all of the things that we know that they need when they come out of prison. 
Um, and so just to name some of the artists that we're going to be having, we're going to be having Warren Smith, who's um, a drummer, a percussionist, um, who's from Chicago. And, you know, he's played alongside renowned artists like Miles Davis and Nina Simone. Um, we have Clay Jenkins, um, who released seven solo records um, and also like teaches music. We have Caroline Davis, who's also going to be singing. She's, um, you know, done a lot of work in terms of, you know, being a saxophonist, a flutist, and a composer. We have um, also Cheyenne G from the West Coast, who's also going to be performing. And, you know, she does her music as a way to like inspire and educate people through her music, which is right in line um, in terms of what we're looking to do. And she was named um, as one of the Bay Area's like stand up, stand out hip hop artists and continues to empower. So these are people who are known, who are up and coming, who are, you know, really have a buzz behind them, who really are great musicians, composers, who are multi-talented. Um, we have Bilal Suni Ali, who's um, a soloist, and um, he was with the legendary Jill Scott Heron and Brian Jackson um, and the Midnight Band. And so he performs, you know, he's performed all around the world. Um, and he's also um, a lecturer as well. And he's a community activist. He does tons of stuff for political prisoners. Um, he does a lot of work for Jamil, um, with Imam Jamil al uh, down in Georgia. So these are people who are, are not just, you know, supporting with providing, you know, their talent to this event, but they're also supporting by doing the work. Um, like, you know, Caroline Davis, who, you know, decided to offer her services to, um, um, just start and, you know, get some of the other jazz people that she knows to come on board and do it. We have also Danielle Ponder, uh, who just did a tiny desk concert recently. And, you know, they said it was like one of the best tiny desk concerts of 2020. Um, so we have a lot of people who really are legends who have done so much work and who stand on their own and, uh, like Sabu Adiola, um, we have uh, Camille Thurman, we have Angoma Hill. So these are just naming some of the people who are going to be performing at this event. So we're really honored and people are really receiving a treat with this event. Um, getting to see all of these amazing legendary artists, ones who are up and coming, every people who are multi-talented, um, who are putting on a spectacular show. And we're only asking that people, you know, do a small donation of $20. If you don't have the $20, we, we're not going to turn you away, of course. You know, we're, we're doing this online, but we have to remember why we're doing it. And so whatever you can donate, donate it. If you can donate $1,000, yes, we want you to come. Don't think like we are asking, you know, for a small donation of $20 and just donate that $20 and that's where it stops. No, if you're able to donate way more, you know, you can go ahead and donate that. And like Sister Nzinga said, you can be part of that Underground Railroad. You can make that donation. Nobody else will know you you made that donation to the event because you can just use one of the various um, links that we'll have on our Northeast Political Prisoner um, page, which are which is our website, Northeast Political Prisoner Coalition .com. We'll have links where you can pay with Venmo, PayPal, uh, Cash App, Zelle. So any way that you want to pay, we have it there. And when you make the payment, nobody's going to see that you donated that money. So even if you're somebody who doesn't want to be known that you're donating, it's cool because you can still donate and you don't have to, you know, there's no cap on how much you can donate um, either. So, you know, you're really, really in for a treat where we're asking a $20 donation, but you see based on the people that just some of the people I've, I've thrown out there, you're getting to see legendary music, music artists, um, music artists that are, you know, popping up now and, you know, really they're, they're on the rise and, you know, their stars are already shining. So I would just really encourage everybody to tune in and support, you know, really support, um, by giving your donation and also being there and watching and, and getting a treat. You know, and we're, we're also, we, we have people coming in like um, Dr. Ray um, uh, Bush now, black conscious psychologist, 
people speaking. We have people that are coming in um, actually to just kind of support us in what we're doing. And I want to say this about the $20. It's not much. But if you don't have it, please tune in. But if you have more than $20, please give us more than $20. Because sometimes we have young people coming in, students. Uh, we have 12, 13-year-olds that may not have $20. So if you have $40, then you take care of their $20. But understand that one of the things I always say to people, if people to me, is she says the Zoom thing, people are having problems wanting to pay. Listen, if you are if you are at a conference uh, like the last um, conference that Brother Coochie Chocolia did, that you could come in on that conference for two days for nothing and, and get knowledge that costs. Because the people who are giving you that knowledge, they, they had to pay to go to school, to, to read books. Today, you would not think of going to one of these department stores and, and not pay them for the merchandise, for what they're giving you. So please don't find it an insult when we are asking you to pay for the knowledge we are giving you. Um, the, the, the jazz musicians, they are not making a dime. They really are not, because we don't have any money to pay anybody. Every dime we make has to go to our political prisoners. But come on, those of you that are out there and you go to a jazz club, try to walk up in one of these popular jazz clubs, talk about you're going to pay $20. They hear all the jazz musicians and the poets that, that the messengers that you're going to hear on the 27. You're not, you won't get that. And even if you, even when you go into some of the big jazz clubs that used to be open, they're not doing, giving your donations to our people. They're paying the jazz musicians and putting the rest of me in their pocket because they're also making you buy two drinks to sit there and listen to it. So um, this is a concert that is, is there to support our brothers and sisters. Um, they fought for our liberation. Now it's time for us to fight for their liberation. And we need to, especially during this time when so many people are talking about what we don't do, I wanna talk about what we do do. So I need for those of you that know what we do do to jump in on this, on this um, Jazz for Justice concert. And, 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 and give and, and tell your friends about it. We're going to be hitting it real hard on, on social media for the next few days. Uh, and, and we need you, please just join in and help us. And like, like Natasha said, if you don't have the $20, you know what? Join in anyway, because it's good to have those numbers climbing on there. You know, but if you do or you have more, come on. This is what you can do. Oftentimes people say to me, well, Zinga, I don't know what to do. Well, if you don't know what to do, and Zinga will tell you what to do. So, you know, I'll give you my number. I'll give you whatever. And Zinga has no problems telling you what to do. That's some of my students. I'll tell you what to do. Okay. Yeah, and um, it's going to be at 7 p.m. Because I realized I didn't say what time it was going to be. It's going to be on seven at 7 p.m. It's going to be streamed live on YouTube. Uh, we have a, a Facebook event page where you can go on to Facebook and you can, if you type in the name, um, Jazz for Justice, it'll come up. But also you can always type in Northeast Political Prisoner Coalition. Uh, it'll bring you to our page and on our page, you can see that and you can see some of the other work and, and educate yourself because we have tons of information on there as well. So make sure you tune in on Sunday at 7 p.m. And we're, and we're also going to be putting the link for the live stream on our YouTube, um, on our Facebook event page, on our Northeast Political Prisoners page, and also on the website, uh, Northeast Political Prisoner Coalition dot com. I mean dot WordPress dot com. And if you go into Facebook and just type in Jazz for Justice, it'll start popping up because it's on my site. It's on Natasha's side. It's on. It's on several people's side. And if you see it on one of our sites, please share it. Please. And don't just share it. Share it with a a a demand. <laughs> Go to this concert. 
support our political prisoners. Share it with a demand right. to do that. Don't share it because it's cute. It is a cute little flyer, but we need to know that when you put it up, <laughs> that you are definitely urging our people to attend the event. All right. So final remarks before we close. Um, okay, I'll start. Cynthia, you want to finish? I'll start. Um, so I'm just in sorry, terms of because I didn't. Oh, go ahead. You were saying you were gonna say talk to me. No, when the last thing that I was mentioning that was to to share the flyer when you see it on social media. Was there something that was asked after that? Yes, he said, do we um, any have any final thoughts before we end the show? And then I said, I'll give my final thoughts and then you can end with your final. We can end it off with your final thoughts. Oh, did we have any final thoughts before yeah. we sign on? Was that, was that um, um, yes. you know what? This had, well, this does kind of have to, but I, I want to go back, um, Brother Knowledge, to when you were asking me about, you know, what can we do um, to educate our youth? I, I do want to go back and, and emphasize again on independent schools, when we get through the corona thing, independent schools, like Brother Baruti, he has an independent school. And also under the understanding the difference between an independent school education for your child, an independent school, and a private school. Private schools are supported by the government. That means the government is coming in and monitoring, to, monitoring what you can teach. An independent school like Sankofa International Academy that I taught at after I left the Board of Ed, an independent school, you teach what you want because your funds are coming to tuition and whatever money you can get donated. So you don't have that umbrella sitting over your head for an independent school. I understand the difference between the two. I also like to see if there's any parents out there listening that, you know, have your children do um, a, a bring you a, a report daily. Have them go on the internet and find great black people. If they don't know who Dr. John Henry Clark is, every day, they're home. Make your children sit down and listen to one of Dr. John Henry Clark's takes, um, Amos Wilson's takes. I had two young college brothers come and interview me uh, two days ago. They had never heard of these people. They were sophomores. One was a sophomore in college. The other was, was also of that age. He was in college also. And it wasn't that they didn't want to. They were so impressed by the books in my house, but no one had introduced them to that. So I say this to parents out there, introduce your children every single day. Have them do one thing. I don't care if it's a poem that has, has meaning or a quote but have them discuss with them every day. Brother Baruti has something um, um, outstanding on his Facebook page every single morning. Go on Facebook, uh, take one of, of, of Brother Baruti's uh, quotes, discuss that with your children. Listen, there's social media out there. There's no reason for us to stay in ignorance. I was gonna say in the dark, but that's a compliment, anything dark. But for us to stay in ignorance. There are ways to reach our youth, and we need to start doing that and start talking about who else should do it for us. And and, and one more thing, shouldn't they let me get started, just one more thing. Please stop thinking these folks out there marching with you talking about Black Lives Matter, care about your life. That why would they? They are the they are the they are the, the oppressors. When they finish with Black Lives Matters, they come in and ethnic cleanse gentrify your 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 age where you live in. So stop believing that these folks out there are going to help you. Dr. Clark again, oppressors do not help people they oppress take their power away. They're going up and it doesn't even make sense. And there it is. <laughs> and um I'm just right along with right on with what Sister Nzinga said and you know when we think about making sure like that we're our own liberators, that you're not counting on your oppressor to come out here and save you and liberate you. This is what we're doing. When we're doing an event like Jazz for Justice, 
This is us being our own liberators. This is us raising our own money. This is us putting it all together. We're not going out here and looking for our oppressors to be the ones to say like, oh, you know, let's raise this money. No, we're doing it. And that's why it's in the spirit of Puji Chakalia. And that's why we need, you know, us to really show up and show out, you know, show up, let them know we here, but show out and donate and, you know, show that we can raise thousands and thousands to millions. Why don't we go to that, <laughs> to that level? of money, you know, for our political prisoners, that we are the ones who are going to liberate ourselves and, and put the work behind it and put the support behind it and put the money behind it. So, um, you know, final word, just learn more about political prisoners. Visit our website, Northeast Political Prisoner Coalition .wordpress.com. Visit our Facebook page, Northeast Political Prisoner Coalition. Check us out on Twitter. We're on Twitter also, um, NEPPC1. So we're all on social media. If you type our name into Google, you, you'll find, you know, our page will pop up. Um, you'll see stuff, you'll learn stuff. So we're always putting stuff out there. So the knowledge is out there and just, sh and share it. You know, this is do the knowledge and, you know, we're passing this knowledge on just like it's out there. And we want people to, you know, take it and run with it and um, really help in the work to, you know, toward our liberation. I, um, I, I, brother knowledge, I want to thank you. Cause I mean, listen, I, I, I called you, I, I, I text you. There was no hesitation. Um, when I asked you, could we come on the show? No hesitation. You just fully said yes, when, um, and, and send you some information and here we are. So, I mean, I want to thank you. This is not the first time I've been on, on your show, but we need this type of exposure and I want to thank you and, you know, also thank you because I've been waiting for so many years to be queen mother <laughs> and you make sure you address me. I guess queen mother. I was like, <laughs> yes, you're at queen mother stage. Now all your life since you were in your twenties, you were like, I'm going to be queen mother one day. And here I am. And I want to thank you so much for that brother. It's love. I mean, this platform is dedicated to African people, you know, those who are living an African life, you know, in whatever stage of development that they're in, you know, the mandate is for our society as African people to thrive. Our ancestors are celebrated here. Our elders are celebrated here. Our peer group is celebrated in our youth. And it's not lip service. So any opportunity uh, to showcase and bring a light to we should really build a media coalition. So when we have events like this, it's about 20 places that you're supposed to be able to go to. You know what I mean? Like really getting that right. So, you know, along with raising awareness, this is definitely like one of the highest priorities. It should be like 20 places dedicated to where our story needs to be told. So where our artistry needs to be supported, where our agricultural efforts, our educational efforts, and also you know, these other things like our political prisoners, just awareness. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and implementation strategies in regards to proper identification and the like. So, you know, going into 2021, that's going to be one of the goals of the year to build up way stations so that way, you know, our narrative is shared properly and, you know, brothers and sisters that are putting on things uh, for the benefit of African people, they can go through you know, a, a whole network of people and platforms that celebrate our artistry, our art, and our people, you know, with no cut, because there's a lot of chumps and suckers out here that get supported by the masses of our people, you know, and, you know, I, I'm not one of them. You see what I'm saying? So they, they, they limit the amount of exposure that I have to some of these other people because of this other stuff. You know, I don't have uh, these wishy-washy stances and all these other things that these folks have going on out here. So if we could get some solid media, you know, coalition together, you know, Africans from around the world will have places and spaces where they can share their talents, their, their gifts, their skills. Entrepreneurs can come through all of those things. So all of these things by grand design to help those further behind enemy lines. So I definitely thank y'all you know, for putting together something like Thank this you. to continue to have us, you know, uh, as a whole 
in the forefront of your mind and also those who are removed from my material view. You know, they say uh, out of sight, out of mind. You know, we have many brothers and sisters behind, in the, further behind in the lines that we don't even think about. You see what I'm saying? So this should be a, a situation that becomes common practice while we're in the state that we're in to, to reinforce, to uplift. You don't know what a kind word does, what a letter does, what, what anything does, you know, to a, a place that has worked so hard to ensure that they're white from our material view and, uh, and from our genetic memory. So y'all know y'all got my support 100%. That's peace. Thank you, brother. All right, well, y'all enjoy y'all evening. Y'all made you my too. evening. Thank you for having us. Don't be strangers. Y'all know y'all welcome anytime. <laughs> oh, we're not going to be. Well, we, we have yeah. empty. <laughs> we're on roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have empty. We, we, we don't want to be a stranger. Make sure you tune in to us. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Are we done? Yeah. All right, peace and love, y'all. We out of here. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Now we gonna tell them. That in front. We tell them like this, yo. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. Yeah, y'all like that. No more. This man, is open. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. I'm an African, I'm a, I'm a, let's get and back to the beauty that's developed by recognizing the common enemy.